Okay, brothers and sisters, this is your spiritual grandpa, Brother Chapel. I want to read something here that came across my desk, and I think it's important. I think it summarizes a lot of things that we're trying to do, and why we're trying to do it. Because it shows corruption, it shows something has to be done by the citizenry, by you and me. Is the world to accept tyranny by Alabama officials? Question mark. Marshall County officials systematically destroyed $20 million in private property and attempted to steal $5 million in cash and $1 million in land from us, Eugenia R. Collins, J. Monroe Johnson, and me, Brother Chapel. Now, one thing we can do, we have a congressman that will listen. A congressman that has been with us for probably 25 years. A man that's really liked by this, the people of this constituency, of this area. Now, then you might, might want to write this down. Contact your congressman, Robert Adderholt. Requesting a U.S. Department of Justice probe into the federal crimes of Marshall County, Alabama. And because they have been an ignorant, corrupt official, don't. And uh, I think if we get some political help, it'll help. But each and every one of you can be a help. Let me know that you want to help do what we're trying to do. Clean up Marshall County. We clean up one county, we clean up a state, we make it a better government. We get to really s o obey the Constitution of the United States, not try to change it. So I'm, I'm leaving you this little message here today. It's short, but it's sweet, but it's to the point. And let, please get in touch with me. Again, I will leave you my address and my phone number. My phone number is 205-237-5971. Two zero five two three seven five nine seven one. If you want to drop me a postcard or a letter, give me some encouragement. And we'll always accept money. Everything costs money. Anyhow, the address is Spiritual Grandpa, thirty one seventy three Solitude Road, Albertville, Alabama, three five nine five one. Okay, Spiritual Grandpa, 3173, Solitude Road, Albertville, Alabama, 35950. Thank you so much for your time, and God bless you, and let, do everything, everything that's right to help your fellow man, that we may have a better community. on and you got the audio on right okay good morning brothers and sisters this is your spiritual grandpa brother chapel the old world war ii veteran trying to bring information to the people trying to things that we should know about that we might have better government after all the government has a lot to do with our lives with our everyday lives if they're wrong they make our lives miserable I want to go back. I want to go back in time. I want to go back to the Civil War. Why did we have a Civil War? It was a land grab. The South wanted to take the southern half of the United States. They also wanted to have slaves and they wanted to have things that the North didn't go along with. They thought they had an opportunity. They had England to back them. Oh, they're going to give them whatever they need. Big lie. And they said, well, the northern troops is about 20,000, I think. But most of them are out west fighting Indians. We can do it. We can jump in there, even though they got 22 million people. And we only have about 5 million. We can do it. And we got God on our side. Oh, we got the Bible under our arm and a shotgun the other hand. No. It was an illegal move. They know it's an illegal move. It's a part of our history. I hope we've learned something from it because many lives were lost. Now we jump ahead. This is in 1861, 1865. Let's jump ahead to 1935. What do we have here? 
Again, this is a racial thing. And it's also wanting to prove white supremacy. So we have these boys, the Scottsboro boys, they're in a train. Two girls get on that train. And of course, the train is sidetracked and the whole thing, it seems like it was, it was orchestrated. Two of the young boys were only 13, 14 years old and they were in another boxcars. But they took all of them and they had a trial and condemned them to death. A 12 jury men jury trial condemned them to death. You know, the Alabama Supreme Court had to step in. This is just too much. They stepped in and said, you cannot kill these young boys. They weren't even in the same boxcars. That's okay. We'll just let them run in prison for the rest of their life. There's been a lot of misjustice in, in, our, in our world. And Alabama has its share. So now we go ahead to the Selma March. March. Now, so the Selma March was in 1965. We jump ahead with the same mindset. Can you realize the mindset they had? These people were church going people dressed up. It was a Sunday. They came from Selma to the Pettus Bridge. They wanted their voting rights, which was their, their absolute right to have it as, as U.S. citizens. They set the dogs on them. They used the billy clubs. They used horses. They used everything and beat the tar out of them. Now we got one big difference. The other two things I talked about, we didn't have television. Everything was maybe known locally, but it didn't get out. Now we have television. It goes around the world. The beating of these people, well-dressed people, they're not violent. They're just marching up there to get their rights. But what happens is it's known around the world. A friend of mine who travels quite a bit in Turkey, in England, in many other places, when they finally come from Alabama, oh my goodness, Alabama, oh, that's where they beat those blacks. Oh, that's, that's all, you, that, all they know about Alabama is the Selma March and the, what happened at the Pettus Bridge. What a sad history to have for such a beautiful state with so much that we have to offer. Now, let's come up to the more recent times. Now we have a, a case where it's not racism, it's sexism. A lady makes more money than the legislators. They don't like that. So they condemn, they condemn her. They, they say all kinds of slanderous things against her and, and put a court case against her for $5 million. Now they gotta use something in order to bring this court case up. So they said, well, she sent a letter to this guy that wrote three bad checks amounting over $1,300. And he wrote on the back of the, now what happens is there's a legal method to do this. And she followed the legal method. It's called a 10 day notice. You send them a 10 day notice that they should come to you and make right. Well, this thing was well orchestrated by the powers to be, the corrupt powers to be. A uh, Judge Evans, this uh, attorney Fuller, and his son who wrote the bad checks. I think it was all, all orchestrated to put down a successful woman. This, this is sexism. And it's right all the way from the Civil War. We still have it. I don't know, that doesn't seem right. I need people to come in and help me, which I'm doing this for free because I wanna have a better state. I love Alabama. It's my home state. I wasn't born here, but I came here because it was the best state I could find of all the states I lived in. So what happened is 10 day letter is sent to this bad check writer and he writes across it, refused, and it comes back. So what do they have to do? They look at this application and he works for Charter Cable. And this Greg Fuller gets another letter from Charter to charter cable, a 10 day letter, a letter that's been 
it's, it's been made legal by George Wallace. He passed this law that if you send this 10-day letter, you could not be persecuted. You could not be, you, you, you're doing it legally. S sends a 10-day letter to where he works at Charter Cable. Okay, they've had this all planned anyhow, so now they jump on it. They sue Mrs. Collins for $5 million. They defamed his character. They defamed the character of a bad check writer. My Lord, how ridiculous is this? But it happened. Now, it has to be a tampered jury. Judge Evans, even though the attorney says, this is a frivolous lawsuit, and she's in the right. Why are you bringing us to trial? He would hear no, no part of it. It had been orchestrated by his friend, the attorney, and the, and the, friend, and the attorney's son. It's a crooked operation altogether. So they have the court case and a jury. It has to be a tampered jury. You, anybody can read the case. I can give you the case numbers. All you got to do is get in touch with me. I'll leave you my address and everything and phone number at the end of this. So what happens is they, they go to the Supreme Court, Alabama Supreme Court. Now this is a hard thing to do. They don't take many cases, but they took this case and they came and they had a trial and they lit, verbally spanked the judge, the jury, that they should never have gone to trial. So what does this do? Well, the jury had already said, oh, she owes the bad check writer $60,000, which would deem her guilty because she had to pay the fine. It couldn't happen that way. So they went to the Alabama Supreme Court, which cost over $100,000. And the Alabama Supreme Court, as I said, they spanked, verbally spanked the jury, the judge, the, the attorney, for this is not right. It was a six-man judge panel, and all six of them unanimously said this was absolutely, should never have gone to trial. However, they have not the ability to give money back to the person who has been hurt so bad, financially especially, and physically. So what happens is Mrs. Collins is out all this money, found innocent of course, but it was a high price to pay for innocence. Okay, now they retaliated because of this. Oh, they, oh my goodness. You can't tell us we're wrong. We're always right. But then they started the retaliation. But after she won the judgment, they went ahead and closed her offices. She had check cashing offices in five counties, 23 offices, 36 employees. They closed their offices down for no just reason. Just said, if we don't close your offices, We'll put you in jail. What a terrible threat. Now, Mrs. Collins, let me tell you a little bit about her. 30 years, a school counselor, taking care of the problems of pregnant young ladies and stuff like that. Making things right with people all her life. Doesn't have a mean bone in her body. But they tried to make her everything. They, they said her property was a place where they uh, had sex deals and they, uh, it, you just can't believe it. Anybody who really wants to hear the story, I'll be glad to tell you. I don't have enough time today to, to tell you all that happened. But then they went ahead and closed these 23 offices. This cost over $10 million because they closed them for nine months. And the, the attorney, her attorney kept begging them, why, why are you, well, we don't have time. We don't have time. And finally, they opened the, the offices up. Well, by that time, they lost 3,500 customers. And they wanted to keep their employees. They paid their employees every single week for all nine months, which cost them right at $100,000 right there. They lost several millions dollars worth of business. All their customers had disappeared. 
3,500 customers had gone somewhere else. They can't go do business with a place that's closed. This is such a terrible story. And it's supposed to be justice? There's no justice unless we demand it. And as at the voting booth, I guess, is the best place we can demand justice. So I just want to leave you these stories because it's important. And the retaliation didn't start then. You know, the, the, it, it touches lives, it touches civil rights, it touches property, it touches all the things that they're trying to take away from people in order to spank them because they don't like the way they did them. When she hurt them, really hurt them in the fit, by winning in that Supreme Court, they've been retaliating ever since. Even to this day, they've broken several businesses. The last one I happen to be the CFO of, and that's why I'm so involved. And this is, was a car business, and it's, they've put us out of business. Slander, saying things that are so ridiculous, saying the places for ch sex trafficking, that they, we have it on recorded where a person at the, uh, a supervisor at Walmart told, and there were about eight people there, oh yeah, they use, and I don't even know what the thing is talking about, they use gag balls on these children when they rape them. What is, what kind of craziness is this? And then we have it over at the Boaz Hospital. One of the supervisors, when they come in to see me because I had the, the virus, oh, we, yeah, all these crazy things. It seems like they have a lot of little minions that do their dirty work. We know where it comes from. We need help. We need help. We need just your moral help. And of course, we can always use financial help. All this costs money. Everybody knows that. I absolutely receive no money, nor will I, because money corrupts. And I'm not going to be corrupted. I'm 95 years old. It's not a time in my life to be corrupted. So uh, let me give you my phone number and my address. My phone number is 205-237-5971. 205-237-5971. Please write me anytime. If you can't call me, write me. Drop me a postcard, anything. Let me know you're interested, and maybe you will have more questions for me. My address is... Spiritual Grandpa, 3173, Solitude Road, Albertville, Alabama, 35950. Spiritual Grandpa, 3173, Solitude Road, <coughs> Albertville, Alabama, 35950. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Brothers and sisters, this is your spiritual grandpa for the chapel. And I want to clarify something in the last video. I had people ask me when I said they, they, I meant the corrupt officials in Marshall County. That was they. Another thing was they wanted to know why I talked about the Civil War and the Scottsboro Boys and the, Sel the Selma March on Pettus Bridge. Well, it all ties in. You have land grab. You have civil rights. Uh, people taking, uh, being taken advantage of not having their civil rights. And you have sexism. And you have all these things that are really, you know, racism, sexism, land grab. It's all come to one big head. All these things are now being put on us, put on, put on Mrs. Collins. They're using everything. And when they can't do these things, you know what they do? They start saying, oh, her building's used for se a sex ring. Oh, they uh, take children and they put... Uh, gag balls, whatever that is, in their mouth so they don't scream and they rape them. How low can you get? 
My goodness, Mrs. Collins is a retired school counselor. She's had to deal with all kinds of problems, helped so many people, and now they're trying to belittle her because she's a wealthy white woman, because she's made money. Oh, they can't stand it. They can't stand it. That's pure sexism. So I, want, I just wanted to bring these things up and clarify some of the things from the last video that people seem to have a little cloudy feeling about. So we know what it's all about now. It's about land grab. It's about sexism. It's about civil rights. It's about the things now that are being thrown on Mrs. Collins. All of them. All the things that we've had through the centuries. Let's make the next century a little bit better than we had in the past. We're talking about three centuries Three centuries since the Civil War until right now. Now, maybe the next century, I probably won't be here, but I'll be looking down on it. May it be a better place for all of us. I pray in the name of our loving Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen. I see the red button. Okay. Brothers and sisters, what I want to do is revise a couple of things on that last video. And what I did is I made a couple of errors and then we gotta be very perfect. One of the errors was when they, when they, the Supreme Court, not when, when they come down with the decision, but when they accepted this from Marshall County and put it down into Montgomery County where it got out of their hands that's when they retaliated so bad. They were afraid they were losing power. So they closed down the 23 stores, 23 offices. And I said it would cost 100000 to keep the employees for nine months, which they closed it down for nine months, which is totally ridiculous. What it was, it cost a million dollars just for payroll for the employees. That's a big mistake in dollars and cents. I wanted to correct that. And I want to make sure you understood it was not when the ruling came down, but when they accepted the case and they moved it from Marshall County to Montgomery. I think I, I think that clarifies it. Now there's a couple other things I want to just add that they, something I didn't mention in the original film is they did retaliate in some other ways. They, they stole, they, a banker stole by some method, forty thousand dollars out of the bank account, out of an escrow account, and twice they had insult to injury. They arrested Mrs. Collins's son on false charges, and when they when would they do that? Oh, Friday afternoon, when most of the people were coming and making their payments, and they handcuffed him instead of just saying you needed to go down the court to get something straightened out. No, they handcuffed him on two false charges, and we have that on record. So I want to just add that, and I, I have a good day, and please study this video. It's so important to the people who live in this county.